Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back. Here in Victoria, we got Friday off for the AFL Grand Final. So I don't watch AFL, but I'll take the day off and give me more time to work on the city. So I've got a few more mods to install today. So this is an oil cooler kit. I got it from Max Beating Rods. I've seen some other people have bought coilovers from them. And I, I didn't realize, but they they make quite a few other stuff as well, like rods, cranks, turbos. And it seems like their quality is slowly improving, but it's mostly China stuff. So I just got this smallish oil cooler, probably about your width of your hands. So I think this one should be plenty. It's quite thick as well. Plenty for the little Civic and it came with this bracket for the lines the each line is about one one meter or one and a half meters and one end's got a 90 and the other end's got a straight might have to cut these hoses down just because they're like a universal fit and then in this box it came with the oil filter sandwich plate these fittings that there's two there you can choose from that thread into the block where the oil filter normally threads on and then the new oil filter will go on here so why would you want to install an oil cooler well i think the main reason is your oil's probably hot or you have an issue controlling your oil temperature. So if your oil gets too hot and it thins out too much, it can potentially cause damage to the bearings on your engine and other moving parts that aren't lubricated. So an oil cooler is a relatively cheap, in this case, I only paid just over $100 with the coupon to buy it. With my engine too, it's fully built, high compression, and it revs to 9,000 RPM. So the more revs you do, the more oil that's flowing, the harder you drive the car, the more heat you're actually gonna produce. One thing you need to take in consideration with stalling an oil cooler is, this one is not thermostatic. So as soon as you start your car, oil's gonna flow through the oil cooler and it's going to take longer to heat up to operational temperature because it's cooling straight away so if you do a lot of like daily driving on your car it may not be something you want to install or you want to look for a thermostatic oil cooler so it doesn't actually open up to cool the oil until you're at operational temperature for me this is just the weekend car and i might take it to the track so i can just start the car let it warm up for a couple minutes before I take it for a drive or take it easy. I don't need to rip VTEX as soon as I start. So I'm just making a start here by undoing this plastic panel. I have it on my car because my model never came with an aircon. So if yours does have aircon, you might have to think of a different spot to put it. So I was thinking of mounting it on this piece here or this piece in the front but at the moment my power steering cooler is in the way of the front bit. Also these two pieces on the side of the seam here they're not flat they're they're rounded on the side. So then I was just looking at these tabs where the old aircon condenser sat and this cooler actually sits on it perfectly and the, the large hole in the middle actually lines up with the holes on the bracket. So I could put a bolt through there with a large washer on the back in a nut and just actually I wouldn't have to drill any holes. Or I could drill a hole a bit further back in the, the flat piece there and put a riv nut in. Okay, so what I've worked out is that the I found two washers this size and they're actually just bigger than the hole. So that washer is going to go on the underside like that. And then 
I got a 6mm ball which fits through the hole and it just just fits in there but on the other side I'm just gonna put two washers just to reduce it down like that the next issue I found was that the holes at the bottom here where I was gonna mount it if you put the bolt in it sits on an angle because the hole is drilled right next to the tank so I'm going to need to just extend the hole out a little bit to the side so this sits in the middle the weird thing is the top one sits fine so if you had a piece of threaded rod you could just thread it straight through the bottom one and the top one here I'm just using a six and a half mil drill bit and the shank of the drill I'm just pushing on the side to elongate the hole so that bolt can fit in as you can see now the bolt fits I'm just using some compressed air now to blow out the cooler just to check if there's any metal still left inside now I'm just bolting it down in position As you can see with it loose, you can just wiggle it around and position it in the right spot you want. So that's in there very solid now. And I just kept the caps on there just so the fittings won't get damaged while we're sorting the lines out. Alright, so now we've got the oil cooler situated. We need to get the oil filter off and mock up where the sandwich plate's going to sit and which way around the lines are going to run. So here I'm just testing which fitting actually goes in. And I've got a M20 by 1.5 and a 3 quarter, 3 quarter inch. So the 3 quarter inch actually threads in but you can see with it threaded in, it's still loose. It does get tight at the end, but the thread pitch isn't exactly right. So the one you want is M20 by 1.5. Obviously it's a Honda in Japanese, so it's metric. And that one threads on there and you can see you've threaded out. There's, there's no movement compared to the other one. So with this fitting, this inside part is going to thread over where your old oil filter used to thread on. And then that's where the new oil filter is going to thread on. So you're just going from male to female to male. So for installing this, um, the sandwich plate, you got two sides, one with the O-ring and then one without the o-ring so the face with the o-ring is going to go against the block like how your normal oil filter would and seal against that then you're going to get your new oil filter adapter and it's going to go through the middle and when it goes in that's going to thread that's going to thread into your block and then that's going to be on the engine and what you need to do is rotate this around before you tighten this up fully in the direction you want your lines to face. And then once you've done that, then your oil filter with its seal will seal on this new face here. If you want to install a uh, oil pressure or oil temperature or both, or if you're doing a VTEC conversion and you need a oil pressure source, you can use these 1 8 MPT threads on the side of the sandwich plate um, to put your sensor or oil line. Some people even use this for turbo conversions on their car. You can just run a, a line from this to oil your turbo. Hey guys, so I was trying to find an orientation for the oil filter sandwich plate to go and I couldn't get any position. The top had that water coolant pipe the side had the pressure switch and the bottom, the block interfered. So I thought I'm gonna take the pressure switch out to 
angle it in that direction and then put the switch into the sandwich plate and I was trying to find a socket to undo it and I was able to actually undo the pressure switch by hand and I realized that the wire had broken off so I was lucky I was doing this because um, I could have this could have come loose even more and I could have lost all my oil and potentially blown up the engine and also not having the switch wired in if I did have low oil pressure I wouldn't even see it on the dash so I'm glad that I found this issue so I'm gonna try transfer this oil pressure switch that's normally in the block and put it on the sandwich plate instead and then I'm gonna use the old plug that was in here and plug it in the block so now I'm just going to try this back on the car and see if I can find an orientation where I can put the fittings on. So now I'm just putting some thread tape on the oil pressure switch here before I install it just to make sure there's no leaks. Make sure you put it in the right side so it doesn't touch anything when you put it back in on the engine. Then doing up the fitting on the other side, which was loose. And also the AN fittings were loose in the kit. So with the position of this on my engine, if you're looking at the back of, back of the engine and you're putting the sandwich plate on, you have to clock it at probably about one block and that will make sure that this top your original oil pressure switch is pointing just off of that heater pipe and then you can get those fittings in the side then you've got your normal plug in the bottom here so now i'm just going to put the fitting in loose and leave this so it can swivel and i'll get the hoses on the back here was the only orientation I was able to make everything fit. I was a bit lazy here and I didn't want to remove the lines of the car so I'm just taking the ends, the fitting off the ends of the hose so I can mock up positioning it before I cut it. So you just saw me take off the fittings on the ends of the hose and I've just got the tails on the oil cooler. Now I've just marked the hose where I wanted to cut it lining it up with the fitting on the cooler and I'm just using some tin snips now to cut the line. It is a bit easier to cut it with an angle grinder but I find it makes a bit of a mess and it's hard to get the ferrule back over. So then just to reinstall it, push the ferrule back over the hose. I'm using a bit of silicon spray here. You could use WD-40 just inside the hose and on the ferrule. Then just push the end back in and do the ferrule up into the fitting until it's tight. I did notice these were a bit loose when I undid them. So I'm going to go back and do them all up again. Then I'm just installing the line clamps here just to make it a little bit more tidy in the engine bay. All right guys, that wraps up another video. So my thoughts on the kit are that it's definitely a universal kit it's not meant specifically for a b16 honda my issues were that oil sandwich plate i was so restricted by where i could actually position it because of that heater line at the top and then i still had the plug from the old pressure switch port and then you had castings on the block that couldn't so it was only that one specific position that i'll show you in the video that you can put it on 
you need to definitely tighten up those fittings, get those lines on first before you put the sandwich block onto the engine. Then uh, also the lines, they weren't the correct length, obviously because it's a universal kit. Luckily enough, they were long enough to uh, reach where we put the oil cooler. And the hose is quite easy to cut as well. I would recommend using cutters instead of an angle grinder because the angle grinder sort of makes a mess of it and it's hard to get the ferrule back over the hose. Also in my specific spot where I've put the oil cooler, that two 90 degree fittings at the front don't really work. I need to get another straight. So I did, didn't show in the video doing the other fitting because I need to order that and finish it up later. But you can just buy another straight fitting to put on there. If you have spare fittings, I would recommend putting a 90 degree on the sandwich plate coming out from the block. That might give you more room to maneuver the hoses. In terms of quality, the kit looks quite good. Even though it is from China, I would recommend blowing out all the hoses and the cooler and the sandwich plate before you put them on. I have bought a kit before for my Sylvia and it came with pieces of metal swarf still in it. If you don't clean it out properly, that metal will go back in your engine and it will cause damage. Okay, so value for money, the kit being under $150 Australian, I think it's very good value for money. Considering other kits on the market are like $500 plus, I think this one looks fine and it should do the job fine as well. Another one final thing to note is before you start your car, I would suggest filling the oil cooler with oil first. And then after you start your car, run it for a couple minutes, turn it off, check the oil in your engine again, because filling up all those lines in the cooler are going to consume oil from the engine. You will then need to top it up to bring it back up to the mark on your dipstick. Fortunately, I won't be starting the engine today on the car just because I need to wait for the other fitting, the straight fitting to come. Um, but when it does, I will start it up and I'll update the comments if I see anything. All right, so like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the next video. Cheers.